Hello, we are today viewing the molecular polarity simulation and we are going to adjust the three atom molecule in the center here according to the directions in the worksheet. You should have already read through the introductory information on the front. Um, we remember that even though we can talk about the polarity of individual bonds, when we talk about multiple bonds with multiple atoms making up a molecule, uh, it's not as simple as just looking at the polarity of individual bonds, but rather the full picture the shape of the molecule, and so forth. So we are going to start off with, I'm going to take off the molecular dipole, and you're supposed to look at each scenario and make a prediction. And so I'm first going to make the arrangement of A, B, and C in a straight line. And notice that we've got bond dipoles. We've got the arrows both pointing to the right. So if I adjust atom C's electronegativity to be increased, that will get that arrangement that we see depicted. And so to figure out if the molecule is going to be, going to be polar or nonpolar, we're going to click on this so we can see the overall molecular dipole. And there it is. And then we're going to turn on the electric field and see what you predict is going to happen. You can see the positive and the negative plates. And we're going to rotate our molecule, see what happens to it. And record your answers. Okay, so let's take a look at the next scenario where we've got linear again. I'm as lined up as we can. That would look a straight line to you. Right, and this is the way the arrows appear. And so we'll make our prediction. And let's look at the molecular dipole. It doesn't appear to be showing up at all. And let's turn on the electric field, see what happens. Rotating slowly. Yeah, let's just help it out and see. Spinning around, what happens? I, think I might not have this totally even. There we go. Let's rotate it again. It's floating around a little bit, but not really drawn one way or the other significantly. All right, reset. And let's look at this scenario where we've got, do it like this, A is up like this, C is up like this, and we've got our arrows pointing out. And put this on. There's your dipole for the molecule. Turn on the electric field. Do you like the sound effects? There you go. There. All right. Next one, we've got this arrangement with the two arrows pointing towards B. And we'll put the dipole back on. Put on the electric field. And this time we've got A up here, C up here, and this arrow pointing down, this one pointing the opposite way. Turn on the electric field. And the last scenario, we've got A up here, C up here, and we've got no 
arrows at all. So how do we do that? Let's say if we set everyone at the same electronegativities. Not really get that scenario. There's our molecular dipole. Shift this around. Oh, got to turn the electric field first. And there you have it. So feel free to replay any of the five, six examples and make sure you answer the questions. Okay, so for this next part, we're putting it all together. Before you look at this, you are supposed to have the Lewis structure drawn for each of the molecules listed in the table. You're supposed to make a prediction of the molecular geometry using Vesper. And then you are supposed to determine bond polarity using electronegativity differences. And then determine the molecular polarity, so you're making that prediction. And then... And only then, once you've filled in the table on your own, should you look at this and see if your predictions are correct. Because obviously we want to get to a point where we can do this making predictions based on, again, we know how to draw a Lewis structure, we know what that means the shape will be according to Vesper theory, and then we can um, again look at the symmetry of the molecule and the polarity of the individual bonds and um, make a prediction about the overall polarity of the molecule. So you absolutely must do the table first on your own before you look at this. And if you think I don't know if you did it or not, I can tell. I can see you right this second. So you better make sure that table is filled in. Okay. Well, let's pick N2. And we're going to look at the bond dipoles. And notice there's no arrows pointing either way. Molecular dipole, we don't see that actually appear. And partial charges, not much to look at there. Atom electronegativities, might as well put that at the bottom. There you go. All right, let's take a look at water then. Okay, so we've got our yeah, molecular dipole, that's it right there. And the bond dipoles, the black arrows. And notice the partial charge is labeled on there, so you can just see the values. All right. Moving on to BF3. There you go. And so notice the bond dipoles are all the black arrows, molecular dipole. There doesn't appear to be any of that yellowish arrow appearing. Partial charges. Notice every single end is the same. Okay, next on to hydrogen cyanide. There we go. So here's our molecular dipole. See the partial charges. And then lastly, CH2F2. And there's our molecular dipole and the bond dipoles. And your partial charges, in case you're curious. All right, so make sure you make any corrections and take a look back at any of them if you need to take a second look.